In this lesson, we'll look at a t-test to compare averages of two data sets. In the last lesson, we discussed a t-test for comparing an average to an accepted value. And it took on a, a form like this, where all of the terms on the right were something we could calculate the average value, the standard deviation, we have the number of measurements, and using an accepted value, we compare or take the difference between that and our average value. And we compare this experimental value of t to a value from the table at a particular probability level. In this lesson, we're going to look at a specific case where we have some measurements in two different data sets. And they seem to be close to each other. There's maybe some overlap. And now we want to know whether these actually are two separate data sets that just happen to overlap. Or do all of them really belong to a much bigger data set? Once again, we'll calculate an experimental value of t. And so this is a t-test for comparing averages. It will involve calculating an experimental value of t. And it will have a similar format to the other. Here we take the difference between the average value in set A and the average value in set B. Take that absolute value and divide by a standard deviation. This will be a special standard deviation, and I'll define that in a minute. It also will involve number of measurements, and here's how we do that. We take the product of the number of measurements in the first set times the number of measurements in the second set. Divide that by the sum of those two values. Take that ratio, and then take the square root. S sub P is special in this case. It's a pooled standard deviation. That it means that it's a weighted average of the two standard deviations of the two sets. So S sub P is calculated by taking the variance for set A, multiplying by the number of degrees of freedom in that set. So that's a weighting factor. And we give the same term for the second set. And again, the weighting factor here is the number of degrees of freedom. Take that sum and divide by the total number of degrees of freedom, which would be Na plus Nb minus 2 now. And take this ratio and then extract the square root. Let's work with a specific example. Let's suppose we're in the process of measuring chromium in agricultural products, and let's look at some chromium in uh, peach leaves. Let's imagine we have two different methods, uh, an old method and a new method. Maybe the new method is faster, and we'd like to replace the old method. But the old method is reliable. We take a set of peach leaves and grind them up thoroughly, divide the mass in two and give it to two different labs, one applying method A and one applying method B. So we're going to determine the amount of chromium in parts per million. And in method A, we get numbers that look something like this. Method B gives us some slightly different values. We can calculate the averages for these two sets, and we find that for method A, we get an average of 8.453 is the next digit. For method B, we get an average of 8.10 and the next digits 7 and then a 5. Method A has a standard deviation of 0 0.0585, the next digit's a 9, and method B has somewhat similar standard deviation, 
point O five O five in the next digits is seven. So we want to decide whether these two are significantly different at the ninety five percent confidence level. So we apply our experimental value of t equation here. We take the difference between the two average values and we'll divide by the pooled standard deviation. Let's calculate that in a moment. And we have to then multiply by the number of measurements in the first set, is three, times the number of measurements in the second set, four, and then sum those two, take that ratio and the square root of the ratio. The pooled standard deviation is the variance in the first set times the number of degrees of freedom in that set. There are three measurements. We lost one doing the average, so there are two degrees of freedom here, plus the variance in the second set, 0 0.05057. That quantity is squared. The number of degrees of freedom in the second set's 4 minus 1, or 3 degrees of freedom here. And we take the ratio of that to the total number of degrees of freedom, which is 3 plus 4 minus 2 in our case. That ratio, the square root. Numerically, this gives us 0 0.0540. So this value, we move back up here to put in the equation for t, 0 0.0540. And we get for an experimental value of t, a value of 8.26. So now we're interested in comparing this experimental value of t to the table. And we want to use the 95% confidence level. That's this column right here, 95% confidence level. And how many degrees of freedom do we have? Well, in the first set we had three measurements and we lost one doing the average, so that means there are two from the first set. Second set we had four measurements and we lose one doing the average, so there are two plus three or five degrees of freedom at the 95% confidence level. So here we are at 5 degrees of freedom. So 95% confidence level a t, uh, for the table is 2.571. And we know that the experimental value is 8.26, which is obviously much greater than the table value of 2.571. Therefore, we conclude that there is at least a 95% chance that the difference is systematic. That is, it's not due to just random error. It's perhaps a real difference in the experimental methodology. And we should go back and compare and look at the reagents, try to find out what might be biasing the method um, that we're trying to propose. 